Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we have is a follow-up to our last post which was about enabling easy auth endpoints inside of Logic Apps standard and what we're going to do today is we're going to sort of build on that specific scenario and I'll show you how you can go ahead and use the manage identities to go ahead and call these easy auth enabled Logic App endpoints. Let's go. So shout out to Reza. So Reza is a regular subscriber viewer of the channel so thanks for uh, all of the support Reza and Reza had posted a comment slash question um, after the last video which uh, got me thinking and I, and I think it really was a good idea and it was just around if you wanted to reduce the attack surface of people generating a token and subsequently calling your HTTP trigger within your logic app you could potentially use managed identities to reduce that footprint. And so what this generally means is that in the previous video, I showed you how you can go ahead and generate a token um, by giving, uh, providing a client ID and a secret and uh, basically an audience that you could go ahead and call. Now, in theory, that would allow, say, another organization, like if you had a trading partner and you wanted to expose an endpoint that they could go ahead and call, you could use that method to go generate a token. And I think that's a completely valid approach because that would be a, a non-Azure resource or at least a resource outside of your subscription or your tenant that would be making that call. But for internal scenarios where you may have, say, an Azure function or maybe it is another logic app that's gonna go ahead and call this endpoint and you wanna enable that authentication, you can leverage managed identities in order to you know, simplify your authentication mechanism by not needing to store these secrets and have to retrieve them from Key Vault, etc. So we'll talk a little bit more about managed identities in the subsequent slide, but thanks Reza for uh, being a regular, tuning into the channel, and for the question slash comment. I think it was a good idea. Um, for folks that didn't see last week's video, this video probably won't make a whole lot of sense until you go ahead and do so. That's going to provide the background. I go. I don't repeat every single step as a result. So would encourage you to go ahead and check out that video. I'll include a link in the description of this one and uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, what is a managed identity? So I just pulled this from the Microsoft documentation. A managed identity is a provides an identity for applications to use when connecting resources that support Azure AD. And so one such example is you may assign a managed identity to a specific service that would allow you to go ahead and obtain Azure AD tokens. Now, this is a good example because otherwise, how do you sort of govern access to Key Vault? So Key Vault naturally would go ahead and store secrets, but if you need to provide a secret or a password to access a secret, you're kind of defeating the purpose in some ways. And so this is where you can go ahead and essentially say, I'm going to trust a specific resource to have access, and you can control generally through our back what that resource can do in terms of that trust, but then it allows them to go ahead and interact with that service without needing to provide a secret because you're creating some trust you know, between two services itself. So that's kind of the high level sort of concept around managed identities. I do have a, a link to another video that I put out before that uses managed identities to connect to blob storage, kind of a similar use case in the sense of like, normally you need a connection string to go ahead and talk to blob storage, which involves having a secret. And then what do you do with that secret? Well, maybe you have to go put that secret into Key Vault, and then how do you access Key Vault to get the secret to then talk to blob storage? Managed identity simplifies all of this, where we can basically just say, okay, this logic app is going to be a trusted resource against, in that case, blob storage, and we're going to trust it to go ahead and interact and to perform actions against blob storage itself. So that's just another example of managed identities. Now it gets a little bit interesting in the sense that there's two types of managed identities. One is system assigned, one is user assigned. User assigned is technically probably well, newer. The system assigned has been around for longer, but the difference between the two are is that a system assigned 
managed identity has their life cycle tied to the resource that created them. So in the example that I'm going to show you here shortly, we're going to create a system assigned managed identity for a specific logic app. Now, what happens with that logic app if it's deleted? Well, as a result, that managed identity is tied to the lifecycle of that logic app, and so therefore it, you know, poof, disappears with it. So it has its place, um, it's still beneficial, but it can also create some management challenges as well because what if you need to create managed identities for say six logic apps? Now what are you gonna do? You're gonna create one for each. It's giving you more sort of management overhead from that perspective. So what can we do? We can go ahead and create a user assigned managed identity. And so this is essentially a resource inside of Azure. And then what we can do is associate that user assigned managed identity to one or more resources. So in the case of our logic apps, say we have six logic apps, we can go ahead and create a user assigned managed identity, assign it to those six logic apps. Those six logic apps can all use it. And so what we're doing is we're kind of bundling up this sort of bubble of trust, if you will, and we're then going to give that bubble sort of the sort of allocation once, and then it'll be able to, to leverage it. Once again, go ahead, jump into the docs if you're interested in more info on that. So just in terms of how do we go ahead and configure this, and I'll also show this in the demo, so don't worry too much uh, if I'm going too quickly here. So what we're going to do is start with system assigned managed identity, right? We're going to need to access a logic app. So I've created two logic apps for the purpose of this video. Uh, one is just called secure HTTP client. And what I do is I can, you know, find my logic app once I'm in my logic app and also note this is for consumption, this isn't for standard. We're going to call a standard endpoint because that's where the easy auth is enabled. But these are going to be consumption logic apps, these two that I create. So I go ahead, create my consumption logic app. I will then go ahead and select identity. And then what happens is when I, you know, navigate to that link, we're going to have two options, system assigned, user assigned. So I'm going to have the default is system assigned. We're going to go ahead and keep it on system assigned. We'll then go ahead and toggle the status to on. When we go ahead and do so, we're going to have an object or principal ID that's created for us. This is important. Go ahead and copy this. We're going to need this value a little bit later when we go ahead and update the standard logic app configuration. Basically, the HTTP endpoint that we expose, we need to include this specific object. So that's system assigned managed identity. Now, the user assigned managed identity is a little bit different. So because it can be essentially one user assigned managed identity to many resources, we need to create this outside of our logic app. So what you can do is just in your Azure search bar, just type in managed identity. Then you'll have the opportunity to create a new one. You'll be able to see all of the managed identities that you have access to. So go ahead and click on create, provide the resource group, the region, the name, etc. And once you go ahead and create it, we're going to see a page similar to this, the overview page for that managed identity. And when we go ahead and do so, we can then go ahead and copy this object principal ID. Once again, we're going to need this value when we update our configuration for the logic app. Now, what we need to do, we're not done yet. So on the second logic app, and I've called this logic app secure HTTP client user identity, we need to go ahead and find it. We then go and click identity. And then what we click on is user side. We want to click on that tab. And then we need to go ahead and click add. And this is where we can then browse that managed identity that we just created previously and we can associate it to this specific logic app itself and once again this is where the many to one uh, really comes into place now lastly and we'll see this more in the demo we do need to go ahead and call that restful api call that put against our resource our essentially our standard logic app resource where we expose the http endpoint and we want to enforce Azure AD authentication against it, we need to go ahead and update our put call to include our new allowed principles. 
Now, the first one is from the prior video. So once again, if you haven't seen that, you should go check that out. Then we've got the two new principles that we created, right? This is my system managed identity, and then this is my user managed identity. So uh, that's, uh, that's essentially what we need to do in that REST call itself. So let's go ahead, I'll show you more of this in a live demo and we'll take it from there. Okay, so first things first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at what we need to do to set this all up. So we're gonna go ahead and click on identity as we talked about in the slides. We flip on system assigned identity, we turn it to on, click the save button and we get our object principal ID. So that's cool. At this point, we now have an identity created for this logic app, this is gonna be system assigned. Now, if we head over to our configuration, this is gonna be a fairly simple logic app that we're gonna create, but we're gonna just on recurrence, go ahead and, and run this specific logic app. We're gonna drop the HTTP connector onto the surface here. For the authentication type, that's where we can take advantage of managed identity. And we can then go ahead and choose what managed identity that we want to select. Now in this case, we only have one. We have our system assigned managed identity that we talked about before. And then the audience, we need to basically create a token against this specific audience. And so much like in the sort of prior video, we went ahead and created this, uh, basically a token for that audience. So it's kind of a similar process from that perspective. So at this point, we can go ahead and, and call this. now. I've already gone ahead and updated the configuration. I've done that put command. So that's why this will work. I will show you that here in a moment, but uh, we are getting our result back from that perspective. So that takes care of the managed identity for system assigned. So now let's pivot over to user side. Okay, now for the user assigned side of things, right? If we go ahead up and search for managed identity, so it shows up right here. Uh, we're going to land essentially on this screen. This is where I would go ahead and create my user assigned managed identity, much like I did in the slide. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that. But what we will do is once it's created, we're going to see an overview page. And once again, we're going to be able to grab our object ID or our principal ID. And we need this value as well. So we can now go ahead and uh, head over to Postman. And in Postman, and once again, I'm not gonna go through this all in its entirety. Check out the video from last week if you're interested. But what we need to do is we need to go ahead and take the identities for both the system assigned and the user assigned, go ahead, include it in our allowed principles identities node, then go ahead and update our configuration when we go ahead and do that, then we can go ahead and make a call. So that's one of the earlier steps that you need to do in order for this to work. Uh, and that's how you would go ahead and grab those identities. Now let's flip over to the logic app that will use the user assigned managed identity. Okay, so we're in the consumption based logic app. Once again, we're gonna head over to identity Notice how we're, we have nothing in the system assigned because this is a different logic app. We're going to use user assigned. And this is where we can go ahead and associate a user assigned identity uh, to this logic app. Now, it's already here, so that's why it shows up, but we'd go ahead and click this, add, it'll then show up here, and this will be a user assigned identity that we can go ahead and leverage in our logic app. So from a designer perspective, it's very similar to what we're gonna do here. We're gonna have a recurrence trigger, we're gonna have an HTTP call, but what's a little bit different this time is because we created that user assigned managed identity, it shows up in this dropdown. Before, on the other logic app, if you recall, we had system assigned. Here, we've got user assigned, so it's gonna show up here. So that's pretty cool that that works for us. Once again, audience management.azure.com, we need to have that as well. With this in mind, we can go ahead, we can run, and this will go ahead and make a call to that logic app, that standard logic app that we just sort of gave permission to, and we can go ahead and call it. And so all, all in all, this is pretty cool. Uh, thanks Reza once again for sort of the pointer on this, 
and uh, I think this is a, another viable option probably easier to manage as well especially sort of at scale from from that perspective so thanks for checking out this video and if you're not following me on Twitter go ahead and find me at Weirzy and uh, it'd be great to interact with you over there like subscribes comments always welcome as well thanks again for tuning into this episode and we'll see you soon take care